Uh, I'm sure I speak for all my fellow laureates when I say how conscious I am of the honor conferred on us this evening. And uh, as perhaps the only non-American so honored, I consider myself especially privileged. As a British student of United States history, I've enjoyed no greater hospitality and warmth of welcome in the states of the Union than here in Illinois. Uh, I'm a Welshman, despite what your program says, I'm a Welshman, uh, from the mining valleys of South Wales. And mine is buried here in Springfield at Oak Ridge. The formidable miners leader, John L. Lewis, whose grave I visited this afternoon. There can be few, if any, people who have expressed deeper admiration for Lincoln than my own Welsh people. In Wales, the chapel-going, liberal majority celebrated Lincoln as an inspiring embodiment of social mobility and the Republican, Democratic Republican ideal. When he died, he was sanctified in Wales as our Lincoln, it was asserted that he was descended from medieval Welsh princes. He would later be called our Welsh president. And Mary Lincoln, too, was claimed for Wales. Lincoln, the foe of slavery, won a, a place in the hearts and minds of the pious chapel-goers. Jefferson Davis's Welsh ancestry, notwithstanding, it was the Union which captured Welsh hearts, just as the vast majority of Welsh Americans rallied to Lincoln, the Republican Party, and the Federal Armies. In the Wales of my youth, you would commonly hear the boast, Lloyd George knew my father. David Lloyd George, radical, powerful orator, leader of the Liberal Party, Prime Minister during the Great War of 1914 to 18, was a national political hero. Uh, he was also a great womanizer, which is why you never heard the boast, Lloyd George knew my mother. <laughs> Lloyd George's own lifelong hero was Lincoln, whom he revered as a Democrat and tribune of the people, and during the Great War as an inspiring model of civilian leadership in wartime, a leader pursuing the unconditional surrender of the South in the supreme crisis of the nation, but one who in victory looked for reconciliation. Now, in 1923, Lloyd George spoke here in Springfield during a 6,000-mile tour of North America, he was welcomed as no British visitor before. Lloyd George basked in this adulation, but nothing thrilled him more than his chance to pay homage to his lifelong hero. He visited Lincoln's Kentucky birthplace and knelt to drink at the nearby stream. It was, he said, a glorious day, one of the most memorable of his life. He visited the Gettysburg battlefield. And here in Springfield, he paid his respects at Lincoln's tomb at Oak Ridge. And much of what he said then continues to ring true. Speaking eloquently of Lincoln's wisdom and timeless qualities, he emphasized above all his breadth of humanity. He was one of those rare men whom you do not associate with any particular creed or party, not even with any country, for he belongs to mankind in every race, in every clime, and in every age. Here was an echo of an earlier speech in which he memorably declared, Lincoln is one of those giant figures of whom there are very few in history who lose their nationality in death. There could be no finer epitaph for any statesman, nor, I believe, could there be any greater honor than one made in his name. To the Lincoln Academy of Illinois, on behalf of my distinguished colleagues, I offer our sincere and profound thanks. Thank you.